For old time's sakes, I decided to bring us out to Deer Lake Beach. I actually used to run this beach for about 14 years, and I've had incredible luck out here in the past with gar pike, soft shell turtles, map turtles, a lot of things like that because of the sandy and rocky bottom. Tonight, I decided to bring out some of my, uh, my new friends from Springfield Township Parks and Recreation. A few of the lifeguards decided to join us, and also a good friend of ours from Pine Knob Ski Resort. And they wanted to uh, get this experience because they've never been out for the nighttime turtle hunt, from what we call it here. So we've got about uh, probably about 10 million candle watt power of lights, as well as all our marine batteries and that. And as soon as it gets dark, we'll start spotting. Right now, we're kind of checking along the shoreline and that because a lot of times around dusk, the soft shell turtles and the map turtles will start to come out and feed, and they'll feed along the shallows with the sandy and rocky bottoms. We're going to go ahead and check it out, and then as it gets darker, we st should start seeing some gar pike in that, too. Our Deer Lake nighttime adventures lasted two different nights, with each night giving us some very exciting finds, as well as quite a few laughs. These couple of adventures also helped to get our new Team Reptile members well acquainted with the fact that I tend to jump off the boat a lot, which some of them seem to find very amusing. Because you're walking through the water. Up from the depths, 30 stories high. Godzilla! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if any of you guys remember that show. What a weird nope. idea. No one remembers Godzilla? Nope, not the show. Our first oh, night on Deer Lake started out pretty uneventful with us seeing very few animals while it was still light. As it got darker, our luck began to change and we spotted our first turtle. Watch your uh, reflection of the car. Do we got a light on? That better be a turtle. It is. Is it a mosque? Of course it's oh. a mosque. More forward or you got it? I got it. First catch of the night. We've been out here 17 hours. <laughs> it seems like it seems like it's been that long. But this is a moss turtle. Look at the way it can open its jaws there. Oh my god. Uh, yeah. So these guys are also called stink pots for uh, a reason that is very obvious. They're stinky. So and something I just noticed about this guy that's pretty unique for a moss turtle that you usually don't see is I, I thought I saw a little bit of webbing in between the toes. And generally only the uh, soft shell turtle has the webbing. But it looks like it might even be just kind of a, a strange deformity or just like a unique trait that this specific one has. Also has a real dark black shell with the distinct lines, which I don't see a whole lot. That's probably from the minerals in the water. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, let this bite Ashley to show what uh, damage these can do to a finger. Can you stick your hand out? <laughs> just kidding, look at Amber Will. All right, well. Not too long after my must turtle catch, Ashley and Lisa spotted another one crawling along the lake floor. Okay, slow. She should be able to get it. This was Ashley and Elisa's first time out with Team Reptile and their first catch of the night, so we were all pretty excited. Yeah, she got it. Yeah. Woo! Did you guys get one? Yep. Although I obviously hadn't let the musk turtle that I had caught bite Ashley, her and Elisa were on their own with this one. As long as you don't grab by the, the mouth. 
After Ashley checked out the musk turtle she had caught for a little while, we started exploring again. This is a stinky gym. Don't blind it! Jeez! <laughs> It'll never see again, poor guy. <laughs> Within just a few minutes, Elisa was able to land her first musk turtle and check it out. If it bites your hand, you can pull it out easier. It's like, whoa, that was almost my eye. What? That. Oh, well, what's really nice is when they fill up the water and then they pull them out of the water and all the water drains on you. Oh, whoa, yeah. Look at him. That's true. What did we catch? What is it? It's a musk turtle. It's trying to bite me. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him. Yeah, they have a long neck. He, he shouldn't be able to get you. <laughs> Don't drop him. All right, you can go ahead and put him in that tub. We caught a couple more musk turtles throughout no, the night, but that seemed to be all that we could find on this adventure. We'll see if that clears up. Put your light over we here. decided to call it a night and start heading back to shore, which is when we found something that you would never expect to see out in the middle of a lake. Right now, we're actually sneaking up on a very unique creature in the water, and I'm about to grab it. Don't let it bite you! Woo! 32! Set! <laughs> uh, this is actually a football. You don't often find them out on lakes and that, but sometimes with us, with Team Reptile, with spotlights and that, we see some creatures that are a little bit more unique than what you'd see during the day. <laughs> Just makes them that much more special. Yeah. Are we going to release that one? No, I think we're going to keep this one. <laughs> I think according to uh, DNR and uh, Michigan uh, Wildlife uh, <laughs> Rules and Regulations, you are allowed to keep one football per catch. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and put this in one of the cages. Oh, nice cat. Oh, gee, not even the musk turtles. They don't get along. Get it out of there. The musk turtle will tear apart that thing. Oh, I'm about to save this thing. Oh, geez, let go. Oh. Our second night out on Deer Lake was definitely much more eventful with us finding quite a few different species of aquatic wildlife. It also added a couple more people making it a little tougher to get our old boat around. A little known fact about Team Reptile. Is it hitting the ground? <laughs> our boat can only hold so many people and when you come into a sandbar area, I mean it's Twizzler, I apologize for chewing and talking on film. However, when you run into a sandbar area, it's always the job of the front person on the boat to jump out and pull you across. So, as you see tonight, I'm riding the front of the boat and I'm pulling us across. I only have to go so far though, about a half a mile. I can look at the same time. I can wave the fisherman. Hey, need a tow? I do rent myself out hourly to pull boats across the lake, so if you're interested, give me a call at 555-1212. Actually, it's a good thing that I had been pulling our boat across, because if I hadn't been, I probably would have missed out on our first find of the night. If you follow my finger down, directly below, I've actually almost stepped on a little map turtle. And just like what I've talked about with these map turtles, they will actually sit right on the bottom. I've talked about this in past episodes, and actually the first time we came out here to Deer Lake, this is our second little time out here, the first time we came out, I searched desperately for these. And I kept telling everybody, just like I always tell everybody, they sit like a rock on these sandbars, and you'll go over them and you'll think it's a light-colored rock. And everybody looks at me and just kind of nods their head like, what's this fool talking about? Well, tonight I walked right over it. The head wasn't sticking out or anything else. It actually tucks right in. And because of the coloration, the reason they call this a map is because it actually has a lot of little lines on it, patterns on the shell and ridges on the shell. So when you look down, these lines are meant to throw you off, to break up the pattern and the solid pattern, pattern and so are the ridges. So you think you're looking down at a bunch of rocks. Well, we're not the only ones. Also, the fish and everything else that swim around here are going to look at these guys and think the exact same thing. They're going to be like, hey, it's a little rock. I'm safe to swim by. And as they swim by, it jumps right on them. Now, a lot of people confuse these with painters, but it's real easy to tell the difference because painters actually have red on their head, where a map turtle will only have the yellow lines, and it also has a flesh-colored beak right there. And that flesh-colored beak, the painters lack and these guys, especially on the bigger ones, which they can get a lot larger than painters, the females get huge. The males, 
Uh, about the largest size painter we find, that's about as big as a male gets, but a female gets as big as some of the, the uh, like mid-size, the bigger soft shell and snapping turtles. So, but that flesh-colored beak is a good way to recognize it, and also the, the ridges on the shell and the colors with the patterns and that on the shell, and the lack of the red on the neck that the painter does have. Get that flesh-colored beak. Okay, so I'm gonna feed you those things. I'm gonna them. Don't stick them up your nose. Things were pretty slow for a while oh, after our map turtle like catch, but all that changed once it got dark. <laughs> oh, okay. Do that laugh again. <laughs> oh, turn, turn. Oh. <laughs> you hooking it up. Watch out, you're like reading their eyes. What are you going for? Another net. What are you going for? Soft shell. Grab it. Lights right in front, please. Go ahead, back up. Left a little. See it? No. Oh, yeah. Uh. Where do you got it? Forward, or you we got it? Got it. He's a shop shop. I like And my ear number. Sorry. Now, we just caught a soft shell turtle. Once again, I uh, decided rather than to try to get up and try to get the nets ready, I have a tendency to jump out of the boat, and I always hope that I don't land on the turtle. Now, the soft shell turtle will actually bite, and it will actually hurt, even though their beak isn't that strong, but because of the point, it can definitely hurt. This is a little guy. It's definitely not a juvenile. Probably, I'd say, about two, three years old. And you can see that he's got a very long neck and he wants to take my fingers off. Uh, that little snout in the front is the reason that they sit down on the bottoms of the shallow water. They can actually bury themselves underneath the gravel and stick just their head up and have those nostrils just out of the, the water and be able to breathe. So really, this turtle honestly could get away with, other than if it's female laying eggs, this turtle could get away with never putting its head completely above the water because of that snout. Now if it's a wavy day, it's going to have a tougher time. But if they stay over in the corners and the shallows and that, it's really easy for them to stay burrowed. And one of the reasons they stay burrowed, and it's the whole reason they have their name, is they are a, literally a soft shell turtle. This one, it's a leathery, like rubbery material. The carapace is meant to be and designed to be flat for the animal so they can stay and burrowed under and stay flat on the ground. And it also has the breakup of the pattern to help kind of camouflage it on the ground with rocks and in sand especially. When this is laying in sand, it's really tough to pick them up when, you're, when it comes to spotting them. Now the plastron is almost uh, non-existent when it comes to a shell. It's, it's a real thin, almost like a membrane, and they have very little covering. These guys are actually a delicacy out, uh, I believe it's in the Far East, but I know there's a lot of people who eat these turtles. Um, not encouraging that at all because I love turtles. Don't bite yourself. Silly turtle. Uh, <laughs> another unique feature though, since the turtle is biting itself, it's kind of reminding me that this turtle actually, oh, what are you doing? <laughs> this turtle <laughs> has a few problems. Uh, <laughs> but this turtle will use the back, that webbing design, this has the most webbing out of all the turtles when it comes to uh, between their toes. And that webbing allows this turtle to move so fast through the water and that's part of the reason that I actually use two nets because they can swim as fast forward or as fast backward as they can forward. So they can really move through the water and because of that design, the uh, aerodynamic design with the flattened shell and the way the current just ripples right over their back, they can really move through the water. But this is, oh! <laughs> this thing is more feisty than some of the big snapping turtles I've caught. We're going to go ahead and uh, get this guy in one of our uh, little buckets for now because we're actually going to use it for one of our upcoming <laughs> exhibits. Hopefully by then he still has all his legs. Uh, when they're in the water, they're not going to be as aggressive. This is uh, 
much like snapping turtles and those other turtles that do not have the protective covering, they have to rely on their jaws and their claws and their aggression because without that they can't protect themselves. They don't have the ability of those box turtles and blanding turtles and those turtles to get in their shell and close up the shell using the hinges and that. And, you know, those shells made of that hard bone, I mean, you could have a hawk on those having a difficult time breaking through. Where these guys, I could crush this guy in my hand if I tried. I mean, and it wouldn't take much effort because they are so soft and so light so that they have the ability to fly through the water real quick and everything else. And these guys don't need the strong jaws to eat the fish and that. They'll eat some of the smaller crustaceans, things like that. So even on land with the jaws, when they're large, they can protect themselves. But a little guy like this on the land is going to really have a tough time. And there's just about any predator could actually, could actually attack and harm this guy. Hey, Rich, I got a question. How big can these guys get? Well, softshell turtles can actually get pretty large. Their carapace can get well over 10 inches. <laughs> I'm saying 10 inches like this. I'm like a big fisherman. <laughs> you know, I caught a one-foot bass the other day. Uh, no, I mean, their, their carapace can get at least a foot long, and they stay that round. Now, weight-wise, I honestly don't know. Uh, snapping turtles and that can get over 30 pounds. These guys, because they're so light, I'd say my guessment, my best guessment, is about 10 pounds. But a large carapace. In Michigan, they are the second largest turtle compared to the, the snapping turtle when it comes to the size they can get. And once again, the females will get a lot larger because of the egg laying capacity than the males are going to get. Ruby. Can right. I ask you another question? Sure. Okay. Go ahead with the question, caller. <laughs> um, do the soft shells have any like natural predators? What are they? Yeah, just about everything. Uh, okay. uh, as a baby, a soft shell turtle will get eaten by the fish, uh, herons, frogs, anything that can swallow it basically or chew it up. Even snakes will eat the babies. Now as they're bigger, um, the large soft shells in the water out here can actually even be attacked by snapping turtles and that once in a while. But mostly it's going to be the large birds, herons, things like that, they're going to attack it. Even raccoons and that can flip them over and tear them apart. That's the problem is once a soft shell gets flipped over, they're vulnerable to anything and everything because they have no protection at all underneath. Do they live in the ocean? I'm sure there's some that probably do. This one is specifically a spiny soft shell that lives, it only lives in, I shouldn't say only lives it. We have the spiny soft shell here in Michigan in the Great Lakes region, but there's a Florida soft shell. There's a number of different subspecies, just like the garter snake. The garter snake, we have a common garter snake and a butler's garter snake, but there's also a short-headed garter snake that we don't have in Michigan. There's a western garter snake. There's actually called an eastern garter snake that's a subspecies of the common garter snake that we supposedly have in Michigan, but yet it depends on what book you read. Yeah, it's, it's all crazy. So I just call it a garter snake or a softshell turtle. <laughs> softshell turtle lives in Michigan. I have a question. Go ahead with your question, Whitney. <laughs> Well, you said that it makes them really easy to be caught when they're little. Does that make them more rare because most of them, most of them get killed or eaten because they're, when they're so small? It depends on the body of water. Now, this lake is a good habitat for these guys, so there's a lot of soft shells out here. Not nearly as many as you're going to find painted turtles, but we find more soft shells out here than we find snapping turtles. doesn't mean there are more soft shells than snapping turtles out here, but we have a tendency to find more. Um, but you won't find these on as many lakes and ponds as you will find snappers or painted turtles. Uh, right now, there's definitely a lot more of these than um, some of the others like Blandings and that because these are still not listed on the endangered or threatened species list. Some habitats are fantastic for them and they thrive and this is one of those places. But um, swamps, places like that that don't have the sandy bottom, that there's going to be more predators around, raccoons, things like that that can eat them. Their, their populations will be devastated if they ever tried to, you know, tried to survive there. But here, what's going to get them other than boats and and fishermen? Team reptile. Really? Yeah, team reptile, team reptile catching them. Reptile. But there's not a lot of there's not a lot of large predators that can take them off a large body of water like this. Take them off the shore. Now the little baby ones will get eaten by the large fish. You know, pike will chew them up. The herons that sit along the edges. But once they're once they're about this size, they're going to be a little more, you know, a little better off. They're still not completely safe but as they get larger and larger they can at least protect themselves a little bit better and their speed is the the main thing i mean these guys are so fast underwater that's hard for anything to get them all right let's go get some more stuff this is turkey dodo say hi turkey dodo hi peepers while whitney and courtney were talking about things that only they could possibly understand the rest of us continued our search for wildlife oh 
He hit the he hit the net, but he took off. He's right there. He's a little guy. We're going really shallow. Going into the net. Although I had completely missed this juvenile musk turtle, Ashley was able to catch it as it swam under the other side of the boat. This turtle and another musk turtle that Courtney had caught gave us enough of this particular species to have for our upcoming Team Reptile exhibit. Now if we could just find one or two more map or soft shell turtles, or maybe even a gar pike, we would have everything we needed for this exhibit. I want to make sure we get this back. Soft shell too. Yeah, go forward. We're pretty much beached. I can't go any farther. Crap. Everybody back up. Go to the back of the boat. <laughs> Except for one person with a light, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, I'm losing him light. <laughs> I think we lost him. <laughs> oh, no, I got him. <laughs> you got him? <laughs> oh, that's a pretty one. <laughs> You got hose, Richie. You got hose. Monster. Whoa. That is a nice one. That's actually not that big, but it's still cool. Well, compared to the other ones. Where's your head? Yeah. <laughs> little things. Watch out, you both. I thought that thing sticking up was. Whoa! Uh, Whoa! <laughs> you got a 10 on that quadruple somersault. <laughs> We're going to need a place to put this fella. This is the one with the other one? Right here, we'll put them right, hey, right here with the other one. Yeah. Now that we had a second soft shell turtle, we began our search again for our gar pike. By this time, though, many of us had started to lose our focus, especially me. I'm a real believer in protecting ourselves out on the water, so therefore, I always wear my fancy dancy uh, life jacket. <laughs> and many people have uh, started singing a song called Fat guy in a little life jacket. <laughs> Fat guy in a little life jacket. Wait a minute. You know that I, for Team Reptile to prepare myself, I have been lifting weights and pumping up, and you can see this life jacket is much too small for me. You can see I am so huge in the peck area. Do not notice my gut. It is the peck area. <laughs> the peck area that makes it so tight on me must be doing all that lifting of the turtles that I have done working out. <laughs> if you would like my training number, you can call me. Call me at 555-1212. Yes, that's the same number as my towing service. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to pump you up. <laughs> I'm trapped. <laughs> oh, why didn't I think about that part of it? Don't break those. Oh, that's right, we need these. Yeah. <laughs> so swim lesson kids are going to be using this. belong to parks. How come great. this one's so big? <laughs> I put that baby one on and I was like... <laughs> <laughs> are you okay? You gotta, you gotta pull it out of your head, that's the you know, I found. When I was first practicing magic, <laughs> this is one of the things that got me going with it. <sighs> me and Lance Burton used to train together with life jackets. <laughs> Lance Burton's a magician. In case anyone didn't know. Yes. Yeah, I got that. All right. It was Lance Armstrong. Lance, <laughs> me and Lance Armstrong would bike together and then throw a life jacket to try to get out. While we were busy trying to regain our focus, a long nosed gar pike swam by the boat. Because these fish are so fast and they tend to dive deep when threatened, we made sure to take our time to get in a good position to catch this one. Go forward. Move ahead. Left. Left. Hard left. Where is it? It's right in front of me, which is going to be really tough to catch, so turn right a little now. Oh All right, start going left now. Oh, there you oh, go. Oh. You shimmy to the... We continued to pursue this gar pike for what seemed like forever. Finally, we were close enough where I was able to put both nets down at the same time to trap it so that I could safely land it and bring it up on the boat. It's like a swordfish. Whoa! You want a light on it? I haven't either. This is a gar pike, and this is actually a small gar pike. I'm guessing this one's probably, oh, maybe 15, 16 inches. Maybe a little longer. It's hard to guess because they're so thin. So, yes, it's 15 or 16 years old. I'm guessing this one's about 5,000 years old. They are very prehistoric. Yeah, in fish years. They are very prehistoric, but they're a very unique fish that a lot of times uh, you don't see them during the day. In fact, a lot of people don't even realize these are around here. And the first time I ever saw one, I was alone out in a paddle boat with a flashlight 
trying to catch things for a Team Reptile amphibian exhibit, and uh, this was a long time ago, and I saw one of these things, and I'm like, am I in the ocean? <laughs> that was the first thing I thought. But these things can grow to be over five feet long. This is a little guy. I don't want to keep them out of the out of the water too long. Uh, they have very sharp teeth, and they also have some too where their scales. If if I were to let it slide through my hand backwards, it could tear my hand up the way the scales are, the way they're laid out. But those teeth especially can be very dangerous. This is a small one. Should be able to hurt me too bad. But tiny little teeth, and it shakes its head side to side to eat. And if it were to bite me, it would shake its head and it would just scratch and tear me all up there. And the bigger ones could take your finger off, especially those five foot ones. But I'm going to go ahead and put this in a little tub for us. We're going to end up measuring it and weighing it later on because we want to collect data for uh, the different lakes and that that we're on. So we'll try to find out how big this is and try to do what I call an inventory of the species here. After we put the gar pike into one of the boat's live wells, we started looking for a frog that we could all hear, but unfortunately not see. What kind of frog is it? Uh, it was a green frog if it did that. It was. If it went bow. Now if it went bow, chicka bow, bow, then it would be a green frog. It'd be really cool if it did that. Later in the night, as we started to see more gar pike swimming along the surface, we decided to catch one more because Whitney and a couple of the other Team Reptile members were really curious about the gar's mouth and teeth and wanted to check another one out. Grab a net, you guys, for two. Like how, like just how far does their mouth open? Is it just like the little Not tip? real far, yeah. They actually, what they do is they skim the top of the water. So like if a, a minnow or something's on the top of the water, they'll be swimming along. And that's why we see them up here and they'll just, they'll just open right up so it doesn't open real far because it's not getting alligators no since we already had one gar pike for the upcoming exhibit we went ahead and let this one go this had been a very successful night and we were all ready to start heading in on our way back we ended up catching one more map turtle in the same area where we had found the first one of the night which seemed a fitting end for our two night deer lake adventures he did he was like i'm gonna go and swim in your net it's like the other one's twin Whoa. <laughs> Whoa, rocking the boat. I should have seen it sooner, but I didn't. Hey, I said that pretty quick. I should have seen it sooner, but I didn't. Yeah. This is another map turtle. Uh, in a brief summary, in a brief summary, we can tell because yellow lines, lack of red on the neck, uh, color patterns on the back, and the fleshy beak. The map turtle will now slowly make its way along the turtle pass. Why do you always do that to me? I don't know. Why do you always fall for it? <laughs> Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time on Team Reptile Adventures.